We're now going to look at a different type of model called a moving average model. Now, this is the, the other half of ARIMA models, if you like. So you've seen autoregressive models where you take a regression against past observed values. In a moving average model, it's a little bit like a regression, but it's against past errors rather than, a, rather than past uh, observed values. So you can write it like this. So on the left-hand side, you've got the observed value. And on the right-hand side, you've got all of these error terms, the, the error for this time period, but also the error for the previous time period, the one before that, and all the way back to Q periods ago. And the coefficients of, of this are called theta, which is another Greek letter that gets used in this context. So you can see it that it looks like a regression, except instead of a regressing against things that you've observed, you're regressing it against errors. We call this a moving average model because it's a little bit like a weighted moving average of the past errors. Um, but it's, it's you've got to be careful not to confuse the moving average model with moving average smoothing. So when we talk about models, we're talking about these sort of things. And just like autoregressive models, you can get a relatively rich array of uh, dynamics in the series that get that you can you can get from a moving average model. So here's an example with the moving average of order one. So that's Q equals one. And the one on the right is a moving average of order two. So we're Q equals two. So let's look at each of those more closely and what parameters we use to get series that look like that. So the first one, the one on the left, is this setup. So yt is equal to 20 plus an error term plus 0.8 times the last error term. And the errors are simply standard normal uh, random variables. And you can see it sort of wanders around a little bit. It's not like white noise, um, but it's not, but it still looks sort of fairly noisy. The second one, the moving average of order two, looks quite different. This one looks like an oscillating series. Uh, and the equation here is the current error minus the previous error plus 0.8 of the error before that. Um, and again, the dynamics look, look sort of oscillatory, uh, which is you know, very different from the moving average of order one that we looked at before. And the, the shape, the, the, the patterns that you see in these things are, are to do with the coefficients that get chosen, the thetas, and also to do with the order, the Q. Now it's possible to write any stationary ARP model as an MA infinity model. So here's an example with an AR1. So here the AR1 can be written like this. So yt is equal to phi1 times yt minus 1 plus an error, a random error. Then we can take the yt minus 1 and re-express it using that model um, like this. So yt minus 1 is going to be phi1 times yt minus 2 plus epsilon t minus one. So we plug it in and re and then write out this equation. Um, so sort of multiply the phi one by the things inside the parentheses and we get phi one squared times yt minus two plus phi one times epsilon t minus one plus epsilon t. Then we can do it again. We can take the yt minus two, um, use the AR1 expression, write it out and expand and we get this guy here on the last line. We keep doing that and you'll see there's a pattern. So you've got the most recent error has a coefficient of one. The error before that has a coefficient of phi one. The one before that has phi one squared. And if we keep expanding this, you'll see that the further way back in time you go, the bigger the power is on that phi. Now that we've made an assumption here that this actually makes sense and it will make sense provided phi one is between minus one and one because this coefficient, the phi one to the biggest power, is going to get smaller and smaller. But if phi one was was um, bigger than one, then that's going to blow up, and so the thing is not going to end up with something that's numerically stable. So, if you have a stationary ARP process, you can write it as an MA infinity process, and you can go the other way as well. You can take it any MAQ process and write it as an AR infinity process, provided you impose some constraints on the MA parameters, a little bit like the stationarity constraints we impose on the AR parameters. 
we're going to impose some constraints on the MA parameters to make this work. And those constraints are called the invertibility constraints. So you say the model's invertible if you can um, take it, take the MAQ model and run it as an AR infinity model. And they ha also have some other mathematical properties that make them easier to use in practice. They're a bit beyond the scope of this book, um, but they they are make they do make our life a little easier. Now you might remember back in the chapter on exponential smoothing, we talked about parameter constraints there, uh, and we called them forecastability constraints. They turn out to be exactly the same as the invertibility constraints of an ARIMA model. So what are the constraints more generally? Um, so again, we need to use a little bit of complex mathematics here. If you don't know any complex mathematics, don't worry about it. These will be taken care of by the software. Um, but the way it works is you write out this equation, which is called the characteristic equation. Um, so it's an equation uh, using the thetas up until lag Q, up until Q, the maximum number of lags in the model. And then you take the complex roots of that polynomial and they have to lie outside the unit circle. Uh, so for Q equals one, that just means that theta has to be between minus one and one. If q is equal to two, it means that the theta two has to be between minus one and one, the sum of them has to be greater than minus one, and the difference of them has to be less than one. And for q bigger than two, it's um, much more complicated and uh, difficult to write down in that form. But Fable will take care of it all. So you don't really need to think about um, whether your model's invertible or not, if you fit it using Fable, it will it will work. 